Well, we're here with Professor Dan Albrighton from the University of Sussex. Pleased to meet you, mate. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Dan has very kindly mm -hmm. invited me to his home, which is uh, it's pretty rare that any of these people let me anywhere near them. <laughs> um, so he's a professor from the University of Sussex. He is a well-published scientific author mm -hmm. of several bestsellers. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. He's well, you. <laughs> very well respected amongst his, his peers, as mm -hmm. I've uh, as I've been reading. So, with that in mind, what makes you think you know more than me about everything? All the things you just said. Yeah, but what does all that mean? Well, it, it means I've been studying the universe for all my professional life. I've had uh, my findings and publications extensively scrutinised by my peers and they've looked for flaws and the result is that my knowledge is as conclusive as it can get. But have you done your own research? What? I see where you've gone. I do my own research. Like all the things that I know about science I've, I've literally gone out there myself mm -hmm. and done a, an experiment to, to prove that. What about your knowledge have you actually researched yourself or is it sort of mainstream books and, and, and education? Well, I'm, uh, I'm not an experimental physicist or anything like that. I'm a, I'm a theoretical physicist. Oh, well. Yeah. But, well, explain why you think your theory of the Earth being flat is valid. Well, I've done my research. Go I've on. done my own research. So, first of all, there's just, there's just some fundamental things that, that don't work on a flat Earth. Is that right? Yeah, fair enough. Fair to say. Like, mainstream science, no offence, will have us believe that we're on a spinning ball. Yeah, but everyone knows that water, water finds its level. Yeah, if you put water in a, in a cup, it becomes a cup. Put water into a teapot, it becomes a teapot. Put water into a bowl, it becomes a bowl. I've got experiments I've done, I, I actually film them as well, and I like to go out there uh, okay. and, and really sort of, yeah, here's one that I've done. It was just sort of, so you know how people think that we're on a spinning ball? and yes. water can stick to it, it's mental. I've proven that water can't stick to a ball, you know, you put water into a cup and so on. Have a look at, the, at this, right? This is again another easy experiment. So, globe toads will tell you that we want a spinning ball and water sticks to it. I know it's fucking mental, but that's what they think, so you know, it's like a religion in there, I suppose. But how do you disprove it? Very simply, I've got what's a fair, accurate interpretation of the globe. So this melon represents the globe, as it should, why wouldn't it? Uh, it's pretty like for like, I'd say. Nothing different about it. Because um, gravity's still only a theory. So they reckon that we have water sticking all around us, as we previously talked about. That's why it's called sea level, because water always finds its level. This is what happens when you do pour water on the melon. As you can see, most of it ended up on the floor. A little bit on me, but it's sort of price I'm willing to pay for all the sciences. Yeah, that's the kind of experiment I do. I don't know if, you, if, you, if you're familiar with any of those sorts of things. Um, but that's just you pouring water on a melon. Yeah. That doesn't simulate the planet Earth in space. Well, I know, because the planet's not a globe. That's what I've been saying. So we're, yeah. we're kind of starting to agree, I think. <laughs> Look, let me explain how science works. So a scientist will have an idea called a hypothesis and he'll want to test that or she will want to test that hypothesis and then they will come up with an experiment to uh, look for data to test the hypothesis to look for predictions that are made by that hypothesis and when they've got enough evidence enough data they'll publish the results in a scientific journal and then that scientific paper will be reviewed by thousands and thousands of scientists all over the globe and they will be uh, checking for evidence and they'll be looking for flaws 
and they'll be trying to disprove the hypothesis. That's the scientific method. And if they can't disprove it, and if all the evidence agrees with the hypothesis, it then becomes a theory or scientific fact, if you like. And that can take years and years and years of testing and testing and testing. And then eventually, scientific consensus is reached. And that's the scientific method. Sorry, in case I missed it, have you done your own research or not? Well, no, I'm a theoretical physicist. Well, I have. The point is, look, we're not talking about just a little bit of an experiment, we're talking about years and years of experimental evidence. And you haven't, you've got to have years of experimental evidence with other people checking your work to see if it makes sense yeah. and if they can reproduce those results and if those, the theory is predicting those results. You're just pouring water on a melon. Have those people done their own research? Yes. That you could do here in theory, well not theory, but you could do that for us as well. Like you could. Well, well, no, because this isn't a lab. This is. How about we try it a different way? Because um, how about we try? Um, let's say we've got a ball. How do you explain water sticking to a spinning ball? Like you got tides. How do tides work? Well, well, I, I, this isn't my field, but it's quite a well-known process how tides work because the Earth is spinning. I know how tides, yeah. And at the same time, the Moon, which revolves around the Earth, See, has a gravitational pull. I, I, I do have empathy, as you know, but that's where, and with all due respect, it's the education system's fault. It's not yours. Space isn't real. Space isn't real. What, what, what do you mean? You, you, you've seen Star Trek, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so effectively, what they learnt from Star Trek was that they can convince people there is such a thing called space. I know, mental, isn't it? But really, we, we live in a confined container on a flat plane. So none of the heebie-jeebie voodoo stuff you've seen on Star Trek, Star Wars, same thing. But then but the, the, what's outside the container? Who knows? That's the beauty of well, well, the beauty of well. We all do know it, it, space is is well, space time. Okay, well, actually, so you can't answer that one. Um, what uh, about what about uh, volcanoes? Like, how do you well, what about how would volcanoes? you explain like on a on on a globe? Like, I don't. I don't basically, what I'm getting at is volcanoes aren't real either. Like, because on a globe, you need to you need for the globe lie to be a thing in order for, for people to believe that volcanoes are things. It comes from the molten core. But on a flat plane, they've had to find a way of fabricating and tricking us that volcanoes still exist. How, how, how have they done that? Good question. They've got... Thank you. They've got an underground tunnel chamber full of these magma things. And basically, it's kind of like when there's enough pressure on the volcano spring, as it were, the, the lava will just sort of gush out at, at a press of a button. Uh, That's like... Uh, who, who's pressing the button then in the, your, the, your the, world the elites, view? The elites, the Illuminati, the NWO, whoever you want to call it, there's pr plenty of marketable terms depending right. on the hashtags and that. But the, basically, I know it's all quite, quite hard to swallow because the... It's been going on for so long and no one wants to admit that there is like a governing body that is just controlling our whole lives. But there is. Uh, and, and they're controlling volcanoes. They're controlling volcanoes, yeah. To what end? To trick people. For what purpose would they do that? Because then they would, you know, there's nothing. If you can convince people that the Earth is a globe rather than flat, mm -hmm. there's nothing you, you can't get them to believe. That's kind of like, it's one of them, if you can convince somebody that the shape of the earth is something other than what it actually is, you just know that they're, they're proper done in the head, you know, you, you've got them. So to, to prove your theory, if we want to call it a theory, you'd need some evidence of this mechanism to release the volcano. Well, I haven't got it with me, but... Well, well no, but, the, you know, the, there must be some evidence of that, of these yeah. buttons being pushed that yeah, yeah. releases... 
So the lava. So you can't explain that one either. So we'll move on to something, uh, maybe something a little bit um, flight paths. Why? Why? Like so, if 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 the if the if the Earth was a globe, yeah, flights would be able to just go anywhere around it, wouldn't they? Like they would just sort of spin wherever they feel like it. Like you wouldn't really have to even coordinate it. But because of the flat Earth, <laughs> you have to have all these like special units, like airports, if you will, that are together communicating to make sure they don't collide. And that's what they do on the flat plane. It's vital. If, we, if, if it was a globe, we wouldn't need all this. We wouldn't need... Why would why would you need it on a globe? You've still got the same issue about you well, can't have planes well, colliding. You'd have and... a lot more space and then you could just sort of... If you thought you were going to crash, you could just keep going and going. It's like circling the block. Yeah, but, but the Earth's a very big planet. It would take you a very long time to go around it. So <laughs> they want to save fuel. They don't want to... We've established it's not... A planet as we think though wouldn't we so well, well no, you've, you've said that but it, but yeah. you know the, the earth is is a globe and you can't just fly all the way around it until you land you've got to go from a to b in the shortest possible journey i don't see how your theory about airplanes really proves it's so explain to me why it is that that no one can actually visit the south pole people have visited the south pole they haven't you go there and you get met with hostility from from one sorry no you haven't the people haven't been there you, you it's, it's guarded it's guarded. they won't let you there and and, and i re, i believe the reason is because that is basically where you imagine the poles to be it's actually on the flat plane it's actually like around ice wall and what they protect what the reason it's like you said earlier the reason why why you would lie about this sort of thing is to protect from the resources like so we're we're living here on this flat plane yeah right but and there's an ice wall they won't let us anywhere near it why is that not just because it's cold it's nothing to do with but 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 people have been to the south pole there's an antarctic exhibition a, a expedition that's based there no. and we have photograph photographs from space of then explain this from Outside, so outside the, the the wall, why is it that this sort of landmass is actually an abundance of resources? That's why they're hiding it. Because you've got what I reckon, yeah, is you've got several other civilizations living on different planes outside ours, and they're basically using our species to harvest energy, resources, and anything really that funds supplies their life. Uh, who, who, who's doing this? Well, hmm? Who are these? Could be anyone, are... really. That's, Any, you know, anyone. Could be. We don't know. I don't have all the answers. Do we, do we have any evidence of this? Well, we, we know that that's a thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. We know that the ice wall is protecting stuff. Like, if you try and go there, mm. you know how... You know how penguins are flightless birds? Yes. Did you also know birds aren't real? Birds aren't real? Yeah. I, well, I, so I wasn't aware of that, no. Yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a bit tricky one. I saw it on a TED talk about how birds aren't actually real. They were basically all, all stolen by the government, all kidnapped, and they were, they were, they were, they were inside was put like robot technology, like AI. Which is also now extended. All, all to, birds, or just yeah, the penguins? No, no, all birds, and then, but specifically the penguins. They're a bit more. They're a bit more of a hostile uh, group, if you will. Kind of like you remember the film The Rock with um, Sean Connery, Nicholas Cage. I, I, I haven't seen that. You've got the mercenaries. The they're like the special forces. Yeah. So that's kind of like the penguins on Antarctica are the special forces of, of Antarctic defence. If you try and go there, they're just hostile. Like they, they won't let you anywhere near them. They're the ones guarding Antarctica, and I think, I think it's probably. So it's the pe so when you go to Antarctica, it's the the penguins that they won't even let, don't you, let you get there. Yeah. Well, what? No, they're not penguins, are they? Let's be honest. They're they're, they're like some sort of robot inside. Uh, it's weapons of mass destruction. You know, we just got it wrong in two thousand and one. Yeah, we thought we were looking for weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. No. We got we got we got the extremities of a temperature correct, but. It wasn't the hottest place in the Earth, the equator. It was the coldest place. We just got it wrong. We're having an off day. Like weapons of mass destruction are actually on Antarctica, and they're all penguins. 
Sounds mental, I know. But it's, it's not. Hmm.